Well, thanks for stopping by again. I want to uh, introduce our, our fifth in a series of lectures on Blue, Blue World Crete um, technologies. In particular, we're talking about Blue World Crete II, um, which uh, was described in our last lecture as a material that, that uh, covalently bonds with, with other material. The, the fact that we can form covalent bonds with uh, GeoBlue Crete 2 is an important issue because if we can form covalent bonds, and we do, uh, the, that means that we have certain properties that other cementuous products, Portland products, just don't have. Uh, one of them I showed you in, 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 in series four, uh, which was this material in which we took bauxite and we mixed it with, with, with our material in order to encapsulate it and bond it and change actually its molecular structure so that we now have a material which is non-toxic and not poisonous. We can take other toxic materials, whether we're talking about uh, uh, materials with uh, nuclear activity or we're talking about materials that have chemical uh, toxicity um, and basically combine it with our material and encapsulate it and also change it on the atomic level uh, by, by the actual bonding uh, process itself, the electronic bonding process. Well, when we have uh, a, a substance which, which has such an incredible property as covalent bonding, it has certain properties to it, and some of these properties uh, are, are, are what I wanted to talk to you about today. Uh, one in particular is, uh, is the ability of our product to, to resist heat. Um, when you have cement structures, uh, this, the, the Portland structures really don't have very much of an R factor, and they don't really protect you from from um, from the ravages of heat or the ravages of cold, uh, but if you have a product like this, okay, which is which is our cement product, okay, Geo Blue Two. This one is Geo Blue Two. Uh, basically, um, it, it is it's heat resistant. Uh, it will not allow. Uh, uh, heat to transverse very well. Uh, if I was to heat up this product, for example, okay, uh, in one particular spot and hold my torch in that particular spot, I ask you to look at it very closely because there is no smoke being produced and the only black ring that you may be seeing form is from the carbon of the propane torch itself it's not from the product itself, okay? And as this gets hotter and hotter and hotter, uh, if it was, if we were talking about Portland cement, then we would be talking about something that at 300 degrees, and this is now 1500 degrees, uh, at 300 degrees Celsius, the water vapor inside it would start to pop and would explode. Firemen know well the, the fact that cement uh, it tends to explode and uh, it creates a very unhealthy environment with smoke and fumes uh, in fires. But you can see here the clean, the cleanness of, of this particular product and the fact that it does. Now I'm going to remove the torch for a moment, okay? And you saw where I was heating it, but I want you to see my hand. I want you to see my fingers and I want you to see how close my fingers are to where that burning was going on. And I want you to understand that the only heat that's coming out of there is radiant heat, is heat that is being being reflected off, and no heat uh, is is really on my fingers itself. And you can see how long I've left my fingers there, and how hot that must have been. Okay, because the heat does not transverse, does not go up, does not go down, does not go in any direction. If I put my finger here, there's no heat. So basically, what I'm saying to you is that we have a product now 
which, which basically has an incredible R factor, uh, reflects heat rather than absorbs heat, and it'll do the same for coal. In addition to that, we have a product here that has a near zero coefficient of expansion. So whether we're talking about hot or whether we're talking about cold, we're talking about, a, we're talking about a product that will not expand. And if it does not expand and it does not contract, then we have a product that's not crack, which is a large problem uh, that, that we have in, in dealing with, with Portland. Now, I said to you a moment ago that, that the product really basically can, can reflect heat. Okay, I'm going to move my fingers way down as low as I can, but you'll notice my pointer finger is on top. I have a piece of mortar here, and basically I have the flame on it again, and I'm heating it up. And there is no way if we were dealing with a piece of, uh, of regular mortar from, uh, from, uh, from Portland that I would dare do this because it would burn right through to my finger. It would absolutely burn right through to my finger. And here we are, I have it right here, and nothing's happening to me. There is, there is no burning sensation. As a matter of fact, the other side of this concrete is a bit cool. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know what you call that. I call that kind of miraculous. You know, miraculous is a form of the word saying, of almost saying a miracle. Okay, we have a miracle product here. We have a product that looks like, feels like, works like, smells like Portland concrete, but has many characteristics which are very, very superior to Portland, and one of them is its resistance to heat. Now, since I've been talking to you, my finger is still in the same place, still only being protected by this less than one inch of mortar, okay? and it's perfectly cool. Now look how red hot that is. It's beginning to cool off, and you can see my finger certainly is right on it, okay? And now for the final test, watch. Here's my fingers, right below where you saw that red hot flame, okay? Nothing, nothing. I want you to understand that we're talking about an unusual product. We're talking about a product which has a different paradigm, okay, because it has a different chemistry than Portland cement. Yet I can build bridges, I can build tunnels, I can build anything out of it, okay? And best of all, okay, I can do many things with it that I couldn't do with Portland. For example, if we turn this piece around and you look closely at this piece, I want you to see if you can guess what's in there. You see those little lines? You see those, that little, see that, what's, what's mixed with that? Now let me tell you the story of this plate piece. This core, which I've cut in half, is mixed with salt water and seashells and the sand at the beach. Now, I don't know of much Portland that can mix with salt water and have compression strengths of over 5,000 PSI with seashells in the middle of it. The seashells as the aggregate. There's no need for us to pollute our atmosphere the way we've been doing, ladies and gentlemen. There's no need for us to continue a process which I believe at this point in time is outdated. Although useful as it was, it's now time for us to use technology and science to go on to save our planet. And that's why I am introducing you to the technologies that have come from Blue World Creed Incorporated here in our laboratories in Pompano Beach, Florida. I, and as these series of lectures continue, I will introduce you to more products and more technologies and what can be done with science. Thank you very much. See you next time.